Hey guys, so today I thought I would share my Black Friday haul with you. I did shop three Black Friday sales, all from like brand websites. I don't normally do much Black Friday shopping, but this year there were just a few sales that I wanted to take advantage of. I shopped Elf's website, the Kosas website, and I also stocked up on some press-on nails from Clutch. So those were the three brands that I shopped from. I also had a few little Elf things I wanted to pick up as gifts, so it was just good timing. So we'll start with the Elf items. They were having, I think, a 40% off site-wide sale for their, I think it's called their Beauty Squad members, um, which is just kind of like their point system. It's actually a really good point system. And I think for non-members it was like 25% off, something like that. So. I did pick up a few things for myself and then a couple things as gifts as well. So one thing I ended up getting was one of their primer infused blushes. I had one of these in the past in the shimmer formula and I really didn't like it on myself. It was, I think the shade was always hazy and I think it was just a little bit too deep for my skin tone. It just didn't look quite right on me. But I wanted to try one of their lighter matte ones. I ended up getting the shade Always Cheeky. I've just heard a lot of good things about these primer infused blushes and I kind of wanted to give them another chance. I also was recently realizing I don't have a lot of powder blushes in my collection right now so I was kind of just wanting to pick up another like kind of light soft everyday blush color and this one is perfect for my skin tone. I did wear it for the first time today on this cheek. I have a different blush on this cheek that I'll talk about in a moment but I wanted to try them both on for this video. So this is the first time I'm wearing it but so far I really like it. I think this is going to be a great shade and lately I have been into more matte cheek products anyway so I'm really excited about this. So far so far I like it. And this is a true haul. I really haven't tested most of these products very much, so I will of course share my updated thoughts in a future video, but I kind of just wanted to do a good old-fashioned haul. I haven't done one in a really long time. I also picked up some lip products from e.l.f. One of these was supposed to be a gift for someone, but I realized that it might not be the right shade for that person. I think it's a little bit too orangey, so I might be picking up another shade and just keeping this for myself. But this is the new e.l.f. Glossy Lip Stain in the shade Coral Cutie. This is a new launch of theirs. I feel like they haven't really advertised it much, but it is a new product. I think they did post about it on their Instagram, but I'm excited to try this out. I'm actually just now opening it for the first time. Oh, it's a nice little chubby guy, but I'm gonna just, ooh, okay. Yeah, so I'm gonna keep this for myself. I really like this color, although I think the person I bought it for originally probably wouldn't like this color, so I might pick up another shade. I might test this out, and then if I end up liking it, I'll get it. Ooh, it's a nice, like, sheer kind of lip stain. I feel like lip stains have not been much of a thing in the beauty community for, like, several years now, but maybe they're making a comeback. I don't know. I'm excited to try this. All right, let's try it on right now. All the other products I filmed a demo for, but I haven't filmed a demo for this one yet, so let's just try it on right here. It's not going to go with this eye look, so I'll probably switch back <laughs> to my other <laughs> lip color in a minute, but... Ooh. Ooh, it feels... it feels cold. But not in like a minty cooling way. Oh, that is pretty. It really does feel cold. Okay, that is nice. I like that it's not a super glossy formula. It's kind of just like a very natural looking level of gloss. That is so pretty. I love an orangey coral lip, so I think that's going to be something that I get a lot of use out of, especially in like the spring and summer. So I wiped it off and it did leave behind a nice little stain. Mmm, that's pretty. Okay, I'm kind of glad that I am keeping that for myself. <laughs> Switching back to the other lip color I had on because that just doesn't go well with my eye look. This is the Milani Lip Gloss in Soft Rose and the Jordana Lip Liner in Rock and Rose. All right, so I did pick up a couple other lip products from e.l.f. I, I don't know, I was just in the mood to try out some new lip colors, but, but I did pick up another one of their lip plumping glosses in the shade Champagne Glam, which is a shade I've had my eye on for quite a while. It's this kind of sheer gloss with this almost iridescent golden sheen to it. Really pretty, although I did realize this shade is actually very similar to their lip lacquer in Fantasy. I'll swatch them side by side. All right, so here they are side by side. This one right here is the lip lacquer in Fantasy, and this one is the plumping gloss in Champagne Glam. There's those two shades next to each other. I didn't realize how similar it would be to the, to the lip lacquer, but feeling them both side by side, I am able to notice the differences in the formulas. The plumping gloss is definitely a little bit thicker and more sticky, which 
I feel like also makes this one last a little bit longer on your lips, whereas the lip lacquer is a little bit thinner. It's got more of almost like an oily kind of Vaseline type of feel. I don't mean that in a bad way, but and the lip lacquer doesn't have that cooling, like minty plumping cooling <laughs> sensation. So those are the differences, but the shades are really similar and the lip lacquer is half the price of the plumping gloss. The lip lacquer does have slightly less product. It has 2.5 milliliters and the plumping gloss has 2.7. So there you go. There's the differences between those. I have to say, I think I prefer the plumping gloss formula a little bit because I like a slightly thicker gloss that really hangs onto my lips a little bit better, but the colors are very similar. But I do want to point out something really funny. So I was looking at how much product this um, glossy lip stain comes with because it's so like tiny compared to um, the, the regular gloss. The glossy lip stain comes with three mils. The plumping gloss comes with 2.7 mils. So there's actually more product in this glossy lip stain than their plumping gloss. Isn't that so funny? That's wild to me. So it just goes to show how much excess packaging <laughs> brands are using to make their products look bigger than they are. Whoops, that's kind of crazy to me. A couple other lip products I picked up. I don't know why, I was just in the mood. Um, I did, though, take another lip product out of my cart, so you can be proud of me for that. But I really wanted to try their Hydrating Core Lip Shine. Um, and I thought about also getting one of their Sheer Slick lipsticks just to kind of compare the formulas, but I ended up taking that out of my cart because I was like, okay, you need to you need to calm down with the lip products. Like this is plenty of new lip products to play with. Maybe another time I'll try this sheer slick, but it's basically meant to be like sort of a balmy lipstick with this hydrating core in it. You can see it's like a heart shape. I ended up getting the shade Cheery, which is yet another coral shade. Um, again, I didn't think I was gonna be keeping both this and the glossy lip stain, so these might be kind of similar, let me see. Okay, actually no, they are different. In my book anyway. The glossy lip stain in Coral Cutie is much more orangey, whereas the Hydrating Core Lip Shine in Cheery has a little bit more pink to it. It's a little bit more of a salmon-y coral, so there's a difference between those. I did try this one on as well, and I'm excited about this shade. I feel like I've been looking for a coral like this for a long time. It's just the right kind of tone and depth. It's it's a light color, but it's not too light. And then it's it's also not too pink. Sometimes corals can lean a little bit too pink to the point where they almost look like a Barbie kind of color. This, it's like just right in the middle. It's a little bit warmer than some other corals. So I'm excited. I think I'm gonna get a lot of use out of, honestly, both of these. So yay, yay for both of those. Okay, so the fourth and last lip product from e.l.f. that I got is their matte lip color in the shade Rich Red. I love this matte lip color formula. It's basically like a retractable jumbo crayon. And it seems like these unfortunately are getting harder and harder to find. I think this was already marked down like before the 40% off. So I went ahead and got it because I'm a sucker for red. I feel like I'm constantly on the hunt for like my perfect red. I love most reds on myself, but I'm always just kind of like, ooh, is this gonna be like the perfect one? But I really like this format, especially for a bold color because it's basically like a jumbo lip liner. Like you can get a really precise application with this. It actually does have a little sharpener on the end, although I never use this with any of my matte lip colors. because It's already a pretty thin crayon anyway, but I'm excited about that. It is a nice, just kind of true blue-based red. Is it my perfect red? I don't know. I don't know if even my perfect red exists. I feel like I'm chasing after this like impossible red that doesn't exist, but I will probably continue <laughs> searching. I think it'll be perfect for the holidays. And I feel like I prefer this kind of matte lipstick over a liquid lipstick because it does stick around on my lips for a long time without wearing off in the way that a lot of liquid lipsticks do. I feel like liquid lipsticks, they're supposed to be long wearing and they kind of are, but the way that they dry down, they often can like wear off in like a really stark line and th that never happens with this kind of product. So like I said, it seems like they're discontinuing this line of lip colors, unfortunately, but they shouldn't because this is probably my favorite of the e.l.f. lip formulas and it's in good packaging that doesn't break. Like I've had some of these for four or five years and they held up the entire time, so. Okay, the next product I picked up from e.l.f. is partially a gift. So this is their Hydrated Ever After Skincare Mini Kit. And I was shopping for someone who was looking for a good like face cream. Hopefully they're not watching this video. I don't think they are. This comes with a lot of their Holy Hydration products. The Holy Hydration Cleanser, Face Cream, 
cleansing balm and eye cream, and then also their hydrating booster drops. And these are all mini sizes. So I think what I'm gonna do, because said person I don't think uses a cleansing balm, so I think I'm gonna keep that for myself because I've been wanting to try out the Holy Hydration Cleansing Balm anyway. And then I think I'll take out the other products and give them to her in like a little gift bundle. So yeah, so nice little set. How much was this? Let me see. Oh, I just realized I forgot. I was able to use some of my points because I think I had like a thousand points in their Beauty Squad point system. And so this was like a thousand point perk. So that's, I ended up getting this for free basically. So yeah, I forgot about that. And then this product was a gift with purchase. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep this gift it or potentially just donate it, but this is their facial oil mist in the energizing variety. I'm not sure if this is something I would really use. I haven't heard anyone talking about this. Has anyone tried this? Do you feel like it's like worth having and using? Does it do anything special? This doesn't seem to have any super noteworthy ingredients in it. It does have um, sodium hyaluronate, which is hyaluronic acid, um, like bergamot oil. I'm not sure. Does anyone have any thoughts on this? Should I keep it? Should I pass it on? Maybe it would be a nice kind of midday refresh type of product. Let me know. Okay, so the next sale that I took advantage of was Kosas. Is it Kosas or Kosas? I think it's Kosas. Kosas sounds weird. I was just feeling very intrigued by this brand because it seems like Kosas is the talk of the town right now. Everybody seems to just love their products and they were having a pretty good sale. I think 30% off on their website plus a gift with purchase and free shipping. So I figured it was a good time <laughs> to snag some things. So this was the main product that I was wanting and it's their Revealer Concealer. I just bought this out of sheer curiosity because it seems like everyone and their mom loves this concealer and I just wanted to see what, what it was all about. I actually did have a little sample of this a long time ago. Like I think over a year ago at this point, and I remember liking it. I don't really remember having super strong feelings on it either way, but I don't know. It just, based on the description of it, sounded like something I would like. Um, they claim it's medium coverage, and it's just meant to be very, like, creamy and hydrating. It's supposed to have, like, skincare-ish ingredients in it, too. So I ended up getting the shade 2W. They were out of stock on quite a few of their lighter shades, and this is a pretty good shade match depth-wise. I'm just really glad it's not too light because I hate when concealers are too light for me. So this seems like a good depth. It is a little bit yellow. I mean, it is warm and I do, I have kind of neutral undertones so I can get away with warm or cool, I think. This is definitely a little bit yellow for me, but I think it works just fine. I have worn this a few times now since what I have on today. Definitely medium coverage, certainly not the highest coverage concealer I've ever tried, which I wasn't expecting because that's not what it's meant to be. The texture of it is really nice, creamy. It's not too heavy, so it doesn't look crepey or cakey on my under eyes. And it doesn't seem like it's as prone to creasing as a lot of other concealers, especially more hydrating concealers. I feel like a lot of hydrating concealers can tend to be very crease prone, but this one, so far, so far I think I like it. Glad I got it on a good sale. What did I pay for that? It's normally $28 and I paid $19.42, so that's a pretty good deal. Okay, the next product I got is another one that I just had to try based on all of the rave reviews that it's gotten, but I ended up getting their Cloud Set Powder as well. This retails normally for $34. I got it for $23.58. I just was so curious about this. I ended up getting the shade Airy, which I think is the lightest shade. I don't know how I feel about this. I think I've used it three times now. I am wearing it today. Um, the first time I used it, I felt like I was not picking up any product on my brush. You know, it's a baked product, so it's kind of like hard pressed. And the first time I used it, it, it got hard pan immediately, which I've heard people talk about how this product has a tendency to get hard pan, but it got hard pan the very first time I used it. And on top of that, I felt like I was not able to pick anything up on my brush. So I did use scotch tape to kind of remove that layer of hard pan, which I find it really annoying that I had to do that the very first time I used it. Like, come on, at least, like, am I going to have to do that every time, you know? And I have used it twice since then. It does have more hard pan again. But I feel like now that I've kind of worn off the top layer, I am at least able to pick up product. So, uh, yeah, I truly have no feelings on this yet because I'm I'm just still testing it out but so far it hasn't changed my life in the way that I was expecting but we'll see I'm gonna keep trying it and then they also had the option to get a gift with purchase and you could either get one of their 
like cheek duos or one of their lipsticks and I ended up going for their um, cheek duo. This is called the Color and Light Pressed. I think they also have a cream version and I got the shade Papaya 1972. So it's this really pretty blush and highlight duo. I have the blush on this side and I have the highlight on both sides today. And you can see this shade is actually pretty similar to the e.l.f. one. Yeah, they're really similar. But the papaya shade actually has a little bit of a glow to it. And the, the thing about this that really impresses me, especially the blush, is that it has a kind of glowy finish to it. But when I swatch it out, I am not able to detect any like shimmer or sparkle particles in there, which I just think is really impressive because when I apply it to my cheeks, and you'll see in the demo, it does give my cheeks a nice kind of healthy luminosity, but I love that you can't detect any sparkles in there. And I just feel like that's something you don't really find often in drugstore blushes. So, so far I'm really happy with that blush and the highlight too. It's a nice subtle highlight. Again, it does have a little bit more of a glow to it than the, actually no. Like when I, yeah, actually same with the highlighter. When I swatch this, it does have like a pearly finish, but there's no shimmer particles that you can see. But it does give this beautiful glow. So, so far I am very impressed with this. I've only used it like twice so far. Um, I also think the packaging looks really nice. So I'm excited about that. Excited to have gotten that for free basically. So those are my three Kosas products. The first Kosas, my first time really trying Kosas, except for that little sample of the concealer I had a long time ago. So I'm excited. The only one I'm not so sure about is the powder. I'm gonna have to keep testing it. I, I feel a little weird about it, but I'm gonna give it a fair chance. All right, and then the final order I placed was on the Clutch Nails website. Um, I really have been into press-on nails for the past like year. Um, I rarely paint my nails. Well, I have my nails painted today actually, but 95% of the time I wear press-ons if I have anything on my nails. And Clutch is one of the few cruelty-free press-on nail brands, so I really had good luck with most of their nails. I ended up getting four. They had uh, a sale going on where all of their sets were $5, which is a really good deal. I, I shopped the same sale last year, actually. This time, I really held back. I only got four. I was tempted to get, like, ten, but I was like, girl, chill. Chill out. You don't need that many. Because um, I still have a couple of sets that I haven't even used yet. The first set I got was Starlight. It's this kind of ombre nail that fades from like a deep purple to like a black with gold shimmer. Yeah, just looks really pretty. That is a coffin nail. These I will likely cut down to a shorter nail because I, I can't do super long nails. Um, but the nice thing about these is you can cut and shape them however you want. So that looks really pretty. The next set I got was La Nuit, which is French. I don't speak French, obviously, but I think I said that correctly. And these are some of their oval nails, which I like. I think the length of these will be good. Um, and it's got like a black French tip. I do have to say, I wish that the nail bed part was not as opaque. I wish it was more of like a translucent nude color because I think that would just look a little bit better, but I think these are pretty. If I don't like the way they look, I can always paint over them too, but those look fun. These I'm the most excited about. These are the abstract design. They have kind of that swirly design on them that's been really trendy. Um, I think these will be really pretty for like Valentine's Day because it's like a red and pink look. I'm thinking ahead to Valentine's Day already. Um, and then the last that I got was French Girl, which is just a simple French tip. Um, I like that French tips are coming back in style. I feel like this kind of like classic white French tip was not super trendy for a while there, but I think it's so classic and pretty. So I'm excited about those. Excited to have my press on nail stock replenished. Um, and I'm glad I only got four. I was tempted to get way more, but I know realistically, like I don't use them that often. So I really didn't need to get like a ton. So I think that is everything I bought for Black Friday. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing what I ended up purchasing. I tried not to go too crazy. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you've not already. And I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye.